What is up, family? It is your girl, T. Not nappy, not jojoba. Nappy, headed, jojoba. You have to say the whole thing. It's like a pimp named Slickback. And it's been kind of a long time. No T. See what I did there? I'll see myself out. And your girl is back with a pretty, pretty, pretty inflammatory title in today, I know. But I'm pretty sure that I am shadow banned for real this time. And that is on all platforms, including Instagram. So I may as well risk it all and put my proverbial balls on the table to try to get y'all in the door with a spicy title. As Omar would say, Saul in the game. I've had this rant cooking for at least a year, probably closer to two, but I know it's going to get some folks in a bunch. Even though I can easily dismiss trolls when they're trolling, like trolls gonna troll, that's what they do. Having to deal with people can really make you hesitate as a YouTuber. You know, the people who decide to react angrily to what they think your video is about. These imbeciles who react to a title instead of the content and then leave idiotic comments responding to things you legit never even said. It's fun for us. But let's go. I'm not Jasmine Masters, but I have something to say. Black excellence is a fucking trap and it functions as a tool of white supremacy. Now I'm referring to black excellence as it is typically portrayed. The social and socioeconomic imagery and rhetoric that we are fed, which are, in my opinion, propaganda. And at this point, it's propaganda that is often being generated by Black people and it sustains anti-Blackness. When we talk about Black excellence, it tends to conjure very specific imagery, even very specific people, doesn't it? Madam C.J. Walker comes to mind if you want to go back, but if you want to get closer to examples and portrayals in late stage capitalism, we run into what I like to call the Huxtable effect. You know, the Huxtables from The Cosby Show. In short, the Huxtables were shaking the table because they were a black family on a hit primetime TV series on a major network. But for the most part, within the context of the show and what the show actually dealt with, their blackness was incidental. More than anything, the Huxtables presented an extremely palatable version of blackness that helped white and otherwise non-black audiences to feel comfortable watching them. The fact that the Huxtable's blackness was incidental, I think there's still a lot of value in that. I don't think shows about black people have to be about struggle and pain and, you know, just all my life I had to fight. It doesn't have to, like, it shouldn't always be that. I personally do not want to see only one type of blackness portrayed in media. It's critical for different types of black people and black families to have representation in media because it's, it's critical for black people to be able to see themselves and to feel seen. Erasure can fuck you up. But we don't examine things from binary this or that only good or only bad perspectives around these parts. This is the Nappy Headed Jehovah Channel. So with the good of The Cosby Show, we also have to interrogate the consequences of elevating such a narrow, and let's be honest, atypical template of a black family where the parents are a doctor and a lawyer and live in a brownstone in a moneyed area. I'd say that that's an atypical template of most families. Like it doesn't have to just be black families. They're upper class, upper middle at worst. And again, I think we do need to see representations of black people like this because there are real life black families like this. I have to reiterate, they are atypical. You can look at median incomes or you can just look around you. My day ones will know that my filming days are cursed uh, because there always winds up being gardeners, garbage trucks, people literally screaming, all of the above. As soon as I hit record and that's happening right now, you can probably hear the garbage truck outside. We press on. The Cosby Show and other shows like it that followed broke barriers, but it also erected them. I say that because it made it easy for people to like the Huxables because they weren't those type of black people. When we consider that this example was being held up against the backdrop of the Reagan administration, literally delivering guns and drugs to black neighborhoods and then blaming all of America's problems on welfare queens and crack babies, you can see how problems arise. The Huxable effect, as I'm calling it, therefore creates a dynamic where atypical is presented as typical. And when something is perceived as typical, 
it becomes expected. By the way, knowing what we know now about Bill Cosby that makes all of this tragically rich. Anyway, this is how the view of black excellence is prescribed and it is extremely narrow. Today, when people talk black excellence, it functions as a prerequisite for deserving even the most basic things in life, not just ridiculous things like Dior dog collars. I stopped engaging with comments like this ages ago, but I will still occasionally see bootstrap bullshit under my videos. And invariably, it's from people who say that they have black friends or know black people or even people who are black. Tim Scott has entered the chat and they treat cases of personal, even anecdotal successes as justification for the masses to suffer and even to deny racism's very existence. And they do this rather than confront the system that sees to it that their stories even have to be held up as examples in the first place. And then people love to use these examples as a way to paint systemic failures as personal ones. You know, Oprah pulled herself up by her bootstraps and look at what she achieved. Why can't you do the same? Oprah being Oprah does not mean that everyone else doesn't deserve to live with dignity, love, freedom, just because they aren't as talented or didn't work as hard. There are plenty of people working hard, harder than Oprah every day and who are still scraping by. It's very much akin to the model minority trope that's used against AAPI people, though it works a bit differently. Black excellence is a trap because it's been weaponized through highly specific rubrics. Rubrics that make it normal to condemn those who cannot or will not meet them to be seen as unworthy. And therefore people feel comfortable saying that you don't deserve any better than what you get. Any better than what you get from a system that is designed to destroy you. One of the reasons I love being black is we don't let the evils put upon us as a people define us. I mean, quite frankly, that's y'all problem. We just endure it. I know that our excellence is truly limitless, which is how we get our shit stolen constantly. We just keep on keeping on, keep on creating. But the ways in which our excellence exists are often outside of this highly curated template of what capitalism has decided black excellence is and what it should look like. And through their lens of black excellence, the vast majority won't hit the mark. That's the whole point. This way, when someone does catch lightning in a bottle and they meet these impossible benchmarks, they can say, look, we let one through. What's wrong with you? It's almost a diversion and it sets impossible standards because it functions as a backdoor justification for never treating black people as full human beings. Unless we find a way to win a game that is rigged. Of course, this is all while being told that the game is not rigged and therefore things like poverty, discrimination, and being criminalized from birth are personal failures. It's sad that this even needs to be said, but it does need to be said. We are just as valuable as Skylar and Chandler, even when we make mistakes, even when we're single parents, even when we're late for an appointment, even when we haven't graduated high school, even when we look raggedy, even when we're wearing our bonnet on the freaking internet. Bonnet from a black owned business, by the way, link in the description box. Even when we're not able-bodied, even when we can't code switch. Imagine if mediocrity were even an option for us to still have the same things as a mediocre Chad. Twice as hard to get half as much is absolute Bullshit. Shonda Rhimes didn't come up with that phrase, but a lot of people seem to think she did. That's neither here nor there. The point is that no one should be okay with this. Obviously, our abilities as human beings vary wildly, and therefore so too will our contributions to culture, society, medicine, technology. I feel like this goes without saying, but this is YouTube. So I'm not suggesting that extraordinary people who innovate, discover medical and scientific breakthroughs, or revolutionize music and art don't deserve to reap the rewards of their contributions that are legit changing the world. Abilities vary, but needs, basic, real human needs don't. Not really, we're talking basic human needs and rights. Rights like respect, housing, food, education, healthcare, safety. Excellence should never be treated as the standard 
to deserve those things. To quote Bender, now that is irony. Standard specifically indicates that excellence is not prerequisite. Wealth and being respected by our oppressors is not going to free us. And since the Huxtables, Black excellence has evolved to be an even more sinister, aggressive tactic to maintain the status quo even as the quo is crumbling around us and as we're still being held responsible for our own murders. Sun just came out, so I had to change my exposure. We'll see if she stays out or if she goes behind another cloud. America had its first biracial president and now there's the first biracial vice president, both touted as examples of black excellence. I didn't come up with this, but it is something that I reiterate often. And it is that black faces, or in this case, biracial faces in high places are far too often loyal to those high places and not to black faces. I think in just my last video, I referred to Obama and Harris as Trojan horses for white supremacy because they are. And we need to redefine black excellence on our own terms and stop looking to rich black people like Jay-Z as if they're freedom fighters. They're not with us. Black capitalism will not save us. Support black businesses, be cute, do the things, but black capitalism is not a viable route to free us. Dead ass, I see people out here saying things like, I don't see what's so bad about capitalism. If you honestly don't understand why capitalism is bad, and I know there are apparently a lot of people who don't, well then you probably wouldn't have made it this far in this video, to be honest. But long story short, capitalism is based on slavery. And as slavery has had to evolve and rebrand to do a better job of concealing itself, capitalism has had to do the same. You cannot be anti-racist without also being anti-capitalist. Shout out to Angela Davis. If by some weird glitch in the matrix, you are a black or POC who made it this far in this video and doesn't understand the connection and wants to learn more about being anti-capitalist through the lens of being black or POC, I am co-hosting a Zoom Q&A about exactly this topic for BIPOC folks on Saturday the 22nd. I am co-chair of a political education working group for black and brown socialists and anti-capitalists. So I will link uh, the registration page for the event in the D-Box. But man, oh man, the amount of work and deprogramming that we need to do. I was doing some travel research and I was watching a travel vlog here, here on YouTube just the other day, and I tend to look for travel vlogs from black people so I can get an idea of how I'll be treated when I go somewhere new. These are things that we have to think about as black people. Now the sun keeps moving, y'all. I'm just trying to press on. And so this video was from a black man, a man who in this video describes himself as a proud capitalist and then followed that up with, and this is verbatim, I don't believe in equality. Clown sh All in all, setting aside the unique and varied and uncelebrated excellence that black people display literally every day in myriad ways, just living our lives or coming up with dance crazes that get stolen by white TikTokers. Black excellence as it is packaged, as it is thrust upon us as a template to which we should aspire and adhere is harmful. It's why we have these ridiculous expectations to be respectable even in resistance. From the civil rights era of the 50s and 60s, where we had black men marching in three-piece suits and dress shoes in 90 degree weather in the South in the summer, holding hands and singing, we shall overcome, all in the name of being respectable and then still getting the dogs and the hoses. Respectability has no place in resistance, if you let me tell it. These relentless references to outside agitators, rioting, violence, whose violence? Leave it to a state guilty of genocide to accuse those who fight back of violence. There are not two sides when one group is literally enacting ethnic cleansing and the other group is resisting them. I saw a quotation from Arundhati Roy the other day and she said, people have the right to resist annihilation. I'm gonna move on because YouTube has definitely finished shutting me down if I continue down that road. We must imagine the future that we want and we must be firm in demanding what we deserve. And we deserve to be able 
to be regular and be respected. We deserve to have the room to be as mediocre as a mediocre tofer and still have the same opportunities and have our basic needs met. It's not like there isn't money to do this. It's just money that's being spent in evil ways instead. Also, tax the rich. The rest of us are paying taxes out the ass, so let's even the score. We deserve not to have to work twice as hard just to have freedom and peace and to be able to live lives of quality. It's 2021 and I still see headlines about the first black this ever, the first black that ever, first black head of neurosurgery at blah blah blah. And I see these headlines on the regular. We are well past the point where we should still be seeing the first black anything. The fact that we do see these headlines all the time highlights the obstacles that we're still facing. Not to mention the stories about this or that black student winning hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars in scholarships. Rashawn, who's part of my Patreon fam, shout out to Rashawn. He mentioned this in particular because it is graduation season, so it's that time of year where we're seeing those kinds of headlines a lot. And of course, that's wonderful for that one black student. Not only does it perpetuate this improbable standard as the gateway to finally being valued, but what about all the other black kids? Like, we're just leaving them behind? All black people deserve to be valued, to be seen as equals and treated as full human beings. I've said it a few times today, but excellence must not be prerequisite. We need to flip the script and stand up for black regularness. Anyway, the beat is done, so let's transition to the awkward slow-mos and then I'll wrap all this up. in case anyone actually gives a shit about what I used today, all of the makeup is listed in the description box as always. This is a video topic that I've had in my brain for a long time, at least a year, maybe even two. And I've even taken the chance of putting it in polls for my patrons once or twice, whenever I can't decide what video to shoot next because I have a few different ideas, I let them decide. But in the past, something else always won and I was low key relieved until this last poll that I did. It won this time. And I honestly feel like now is a good time to finally get this off of my chest, despite the fact that there will be people kvetching in the comments because they didn't listen to a word I said today. Anyway, thanks to all of my patrons who did vote in this poll. If you guys miss me on YouTube, I am very active on my Patreon. Patreon fam sees and hears from me a few times a week. We do watch parties, we do movie nights. We actually just had a movie night last week where we watched Bring It On, All or Nothing, or as I like to call it, All or Crumping. We have a book club, I do exclusive videos from my Ride or Dies tier every single month, and we're able to have meaningful discussions without the fuckery that I deal with in YouTube comments. At this point, YouTube damn near run me off with the shadow banning and the demonetizing for real. So if you want more tea in your cup, check out my Patreon because at this point, that is my primary platform. Another tea talk in the can. That is gonna do it for me today. Y'all stay safe, stay dangerous, fists up, fight back, and never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs>